I've got ChatGPT open just here on the left hand side. The very first thing that I wanted to take a look at is just how it works in terms of making websites. If we were to ask it to create a website or even a template for a section, what would that look like as opposed to me myself doing it manually? In that regard, I'm going to ask her to create the footer for a website and I want it to include, I suppose, a logo, uh, a menu, uh, copyright and a small, mm, I suppose, a uh, few links for social media. Now, this is pretty standard for what we would expect as part of a footer. The problem here is that I'm pretty sure ChatGPT does not take into considerate design. Yes, it might be able to pull in things like Bootstrap or Tailwind CSS, but in terms of crafting that design, making it aesthetically pleasing, well, you just probably won't get any of that. Instead, you'll get some raw code that basically completes the task without any of that other nuance. So I'm going to actually try this out. I'm going to copy paste this into a browser to see what it looks like. And then instead, I'm going to jump into maybe another tool like Editor X and see some of the predefined footers that I've made in the past to see what that looks like in terms of the differences in design. Here's VS Code. I'm going to create a new file called index.html. Uh, in here, we're going to go back to the website and we're going to simply copy paste this code over into VS Code. And then I'm going to select to go live and see what that looks like in a browser. So here is our footer. Now, as you can see, it's got a placeholder here for a company logo. It's got our menu and it's got a copyright. But realistically, this doesn't really look like anything. I believe there's some styling that's meant to happen here because there are classes. But as you can see, none of that styling carries across. I suppose you could always ask ChatGPT, can you please also add some CSS to make this look good? Uh, and then uh, I guess if we're lucky, we might get some styling. Now let's see what it comes up with. So it's creating here a footer, but it's not using the class. Actually, it's using the class here, footer dash container. So what I'm going to do is while that's running in the background, I'm going to jump back into here. I'm going to create some styling. So I'm going to pass in the tag here, style. And I'm going to see if the styling actually looks any good and creates a better looking footer for us once that's done anyway. Now, the other thing to note here is that there's no colors or designs. This is just using grayscale, I believe. So what I'm going to do as part of this as well is decide just what colors I want to use for a design like this. And that in itself is something of, I suppose, a design job. But here we have a slightly better footer. I'm not too sure yet about this design, but I guess it has the beginnings of what you would expect in terms of creating a footer. But if I was to really ask, could this replace me? That would still be a no. Now I'm going to try and create my own footer and I'm going to see if I can make a better one than ChatGPT and how long that takes me. Of course, I'm going to take the simple path. I'm not going to code the whole thing out and design it. Instead, I'm going to jump into Editor X, which is a no coding platform. These are becoming more and more popular these days, and yet they still haven't technically replaced us developers. Here, I'm going to select to do quick add. I'm going to scroll down to compositions and all the way down here to footers. And here I have a few footer examples. I can select any one of these. And for example, I can select, say, this one over here. And this one comes with the logo for a business, the business name, the menu, which I currently only have the home, the social links, an address and phone number, as well as the copyright. And it's all designed in a black aesthetic, which I could probably change easily if I wanted to. It's probably all responsive too, which I believe it is. So if I had to ask you which footer design you prefer, I think the answer here is quite obvious. Of course, both of these I didn't technically code, and yet both of them have produced slightly different results. However, this doesn't begin to show the strengths of ChatGPT. It's extremely powerful as a language model to create content for you for a website rather than the website itself. So this means that I could, for example, fill out the sections of a website for a client and not create the design and its aesthetics, such as the UI and the UX. I don't think there is a UI or UX part of ChatGPT quite yet, but there might be in the future. 
That's something I'd be looking forward towards. So here I'm going to add one more section. I'm gonna head over here to say compositions. I'll go to features and I'll pull in maybe something like this over here, which is a bit of a design highlight for a feature. But this filler text here doesn't make any sense. And I don't really know yet what I would normally put in. Normally people would put in lorem ipsum and there's even generators for that. But this time I'm gonna ask ChatGPT fill out the feature of a website better than a Lauren Ipsum statement about, I suppose, car repairs for its feature section. And here you'll get to see the strength of ChatGPT. No longer will you have to generate content yourself or require a content writer to do that. Even if you're waiting for a client to give you that content, ChatGPT should be able to fill out most of it for you these days. You could even charge for services like these and even make some money. I think what some people do like about ChatGPT is how creative it can be when you're asking it to code something and create something that you might not be able to figure out from the top of your head and you'd have to say, Google it, check Stack Overflow and other sites. Whereas if you ask ChatGPT, it could probably figure that out for you straight away. Let's have a look at an example of that. So here I want to, for example, fade in the footer section of a website, uh, maybe three seconds after it loads, then five seconds later, have it, I suppose, disappear. It's not something I would normally do, but this is just more like an example of how it could solve a problem for you. I've seen examples on TikTok and other places where people have created maybe like a 3D game, but it's a very basic one using things like this. So here it's actually telling me step by step how I can complete this function. So the step one would be on load. We have a timeout of three seconds where we would have the fade go in. Then on five seconds, we would have it fade out. Then we've got the lookup here, but this is using JavaScript and jQuery for a fade in function and a fade out function. And here we're combining it all together by pulling in that JavaScript code. So realistically, we should be able to put all of this together and see if it works. Previously had this website design over here. So what I'm gonna do is head up to this window on load code. We're gonna go into VS code and maybe here at the bottom of this scripting area, I'm gonna plug it all in. It'll have to be inside of a script tag because otherwise, well, it won't run. It is all JavaScript code at the end of the day. So here the script will be on load. Uh, we'll also copy paste the next function here. So set timeout. We're gonna plug this guy in, I suppose, afterwards, or we could actually plug it in here because then it'd be three seconds, it'll fade in, and then five seconds, it'll fade out. And then finally, we'll just plug in these two fade in and fade out options. So let's jump back into VS Code once more. Here, we're doing the fade in, and then afterwards, we're gonna do the fade out. I think the only other part that is required here is making sure that we actually pull in jQuery because otherwise it won't know how to do any of those fades. Great, I think that's about it. Uh, now with that all in there, and I think I've spelled script incorrectly, let's fix that up. Uh, we should be able to run this, but it also has an ID and there is no ID here. So let's call that footer. That should reference it properly. Hit save. Uh, let's do a go live here on live server. And there, there's one thing I did forget. I forgot to hide it, I think. So let's see if this works. It did work. It faded in and then faded out. And as you can see, it's gone. But uh, one thing that I didn't have here is the styling. So here I should have something like style. And then for style, I should have display none. So this will just make it well, invisible essentially. So now if I were to refresh it, we'll wait one, two, three seconds. There it's faded in, four, five, and then should disappear now. 
perfect. The next real question you'll have to ask yourself is how useful it is to try and manually get ChatGPT to do these animations for you when you could write them out yourself. Or for example, when there are no coding tools that kind of do this behavior for you as well. I'm gonna jump back into Editor X and I'm just gonna select this entire footer section. Now we've got a number of different effects here we can do. I'm actually gonna do the one here on this feature section. I'm gonna select animations and I'm gonna do fade in just like we had before. Now when I select preview, we wait half a second and the section fades in. We've done the same thing that we practically did with ChatGPT, but in less time and it's easier too. So the real question I think is whether ChatGPT is replacing us or if no coding tools are replacing us. There's of course a lot more nuance to this whole question and the entire equation of what it'll look like to do web development as well as web designing in the future. But I think ChatGPT does have some usefulness in terms of generating content. I think no coding tools make it easier to create landing pages and what's more. And there'll still always be options there for developers to create a website applications with a lot more more functionality than just what you would get with general designs. But I hope you found this video quite useful to let you see the differences between all of them. If you want more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Wait, don't forget to like and subscribe.